So first of all, you might wonder who I am. Probably most of the people in this market don't really know me very well. I have been an online publisher since 1994, which is pre-Google, pre-eBay, pre-Amazon. And um, I like to uh, say for several years that I was more profitable than Amazon, but I can't say that anymore. Um, I have run a number of websites, a number of businesses, and probably the best known besides my This Is True website and email newsletter is the Get Out of Hell Free card, which um, is a viral product that I've put out. I have sold 1.4 million of these cards, which leaves me with a negative ad budget, which is kind of cool. And so, you know, am I really that smart? Well, you know, what makes me successful, I think the key to my success is that I've run mastermind groups since 1996. And I think it is a true secret to success. And where did this come from? Oh, well, I've got another one. Um, I'll get into the specifics of my own group later, but the groups were first talked about to the public in Napoleon Hill's uh, book, Think and Grow Rich from 1937. Uh, how many of you have read Think and Grow Rich all the way through to the end? Wow, most of you, that's, that's cool. It is, fairly archaic language. It's pretty formal 1930s language that he wrote it in. It's pretty thick. It's difficult to get through it. And that most of you that did start it, uh, did finish it, that's fantastic. So here's how he described mastermind groups in his book. And this is eight point type in order to fit it onto a slide. It's pretty thick. And the bottom line down here says, um, great power cannot be accumulated by any other method, which may or may not be true, but I have a more simplistic definition that I found on Wikipedia and I thought was pretty decent. A small club of like-minded advanced talents who meet periodically for mutual brainstorming and accountability sessions. So I'd like to break this down a little bit and talk about what it is this really means. And I think the first key is small and I, by Small, what do I mean? I think online, and I think the way to do this is online, is with at least 20 people. And that gives you a critical mass so that you've got a sustained conversation, but no more than 50 people. And I prefer more like about 45. And I don't really like the word club. I think just group is fine, thank you very much. But basically, it is a, a group of people who agree on some sort of ground rules and formulation that what it is you're there for. Like-minded, I think, is critical. So it's something that you have in common. And it doesn't have to be online. My group, my main group, is uh, online entrepreneurs. It was later refined to be CEOs or founders of successful uh, leaders in their fields. And it doesn't have to be online. It could be real estate agents. They all have something in common. Uh, it could be restaurant owners. It could be doctors. And the key is that you have some kind of mutual identity that you can kind of relate to each other with better. And um, the other key is that you're not competing directly with each other. Because if you've got competitors in there, you're probably not going to say, here's what really works for me to make my business grow. If you've got a competitor listening, oh yeah? Cool. <laughs> Advanced talents, I kind of disagree with that. You could start with, with people who are kind of beginners, um, but I think to really get to higher levels of success that pretty much you need to have pretty advanced people in there and real advanced people don't want to necessarily hang around with beginners and newbies very much. So ideally, you're all at kind of the same level and you're all moving forward. The question is, what happens if somebody in the group doesn't move forward? So people are getting better and better and more and more success, but 
a couple of people over here just aren't really with the program, they're not really progressing, then what? And uh, I'm pretty brutal, I say drop them. So the next key is that they meet periodically. And back in 1937, that pretty much meant that they were gonna meet in person. They were gonna get together in a room. The beauty of being online is you don't have to be in a room. Um, I'm sure that there were telephone groups back in the 40s and 50s, but online you can just do it by email. It's asynchronous, you don't have to have everybody agree on a specific meeting time, you use an email list, and I think that's great. That's the way I run my lists, my, my groups. That said, my groups also meet periodically, and we actually get together in a room and give presentations to each other, and that really increases the bandwidth where we can really get things going faster and ask questions and get immediate feedback. Um, somebody else that might have some expertise could add to it by saying, well, if you do this, you could <coughs> increase the, uh, the value of that idea. Mutual, I take to mean that everybody participates. Everybody has to, in my groups, weigh in if they have expertise. You know, if they're busy or they're you know, on vacation or on travel or something, yeah, it happens. But if the trend is that they're not really participating, I kick them out because I want people to really participate, um, not only reading stuff, but offering their own expertise. In brainstorming, pretty much the obvious that you're all giving each other ideas, you're all synthesizing new ways of doing things that will increase your own success. And accountability goes, goes two ways. One of them is if you uh, announce to the group, hey, I'm gonna launch my new site you know, on March 1st, um, hopefully somebody's gonna call you on it if you don't, uh, don't launch. But on the other hand, the other neat thing about this is you can pop onto the group list and say, hey, I'm stuck on this part. I don't know how to do whatever. And there's almost certainly somebody in the group that can say, well, here's what you need to do or here's where you need to go to get that answer. And what that definition leaves out is the need for a strong leader. And I think it's absolutely critical that there's somebody who leads the group, um, not only to kind of set the tone but also if there's a problem, you know, occasionally we'll get somebody in there that says, eh, it's the Democrats' fault or it's the Republicans' fault. And, you know, there's really no value in that. And you're never gonna convince anybody of the other side, no matter what side you're on. And so I basically prohibit that kind of stuff. And if it happens, I put a stop to it. And by force if necessary, I will put in a filter that says, you know, you can't have the word senator in your subject line, if that's the bone of contention, um, and it will just bounce their messages. It's very rare I have to do that, but somebody needs to be able to if necessary. So the other thing that, that is needed is a buy-in from group members. You set up a focus and a, and a charter for the group from the beginning, and here's what we're here for. And if, if they join with that in mind, great. You've got that buy-in. And why do groups fail? The number one reason is not having a, a good, strong leader. I call the leader of mastermind groups the benevolent dictator, because he really is. They're pretty much all powerful, but benevolent is the key. The other reason groups fail is the lack of buy-in from group members. And then the most surprising thing that people find that why groups fail, lack of significant dues to be there. And that's, to me, literal buy-in. People are paying to be there. They're much more likely to pay attention and to participate with that group. And people say, really? Leaders can charge dues? Yeah, definitely. So the sky is the limit for dues. And you might say, well, wait a minute. What do you mean the sky is the limit? There's a member of my group, I'm not gonna name him, but he's a guru in his field. And he realized recently that 
his um, his niche is really really good, and that people were really paying attention to him. And he is in my group. He's been in my group for about ten years. He really likes it. He really gets a lot from it. And he realized that it, he could start another group specific to his own niche. And he uh, pitched this to his members and said, I'm going to have up to, I think he said, 42 members. And um, you'll get direct access to me. I'll be able to, to, to bounce things off of you, too. It's going to be a give and take. And his first year buy-in for that was $12,000. Somebody do the math. Was twelve thousand times forty-two? It's a half million dollars, minus expenses. So you know the sky really is the limit. And my members actually continually come back to me and say, "Charge them more." And what's the point of that? Why do they do that? Well, first of all, they're willing to pay money because they're getting value. It doesn't really matter how much the group charges as long as the members are getting at least that amount of value from it. So is $12,000 worth it? Well, ask the members of that group. When he announced that, I happened to be in the room, and uh, people were lining up with their credit cards to pay that $12,000 because they saw the value because they knew this person, and they we're pretty confident that they would get that kind of value from it. <coughs> so you have to prove that value before people be willing to, sp to spend that kind of dues. And what I suggest for new groups in general, if you're not a guru in your field, that you waive the, the dues for the first year, prove that value first, and then ask for the money. So my own group, I started in 1999, my current group. I actually had one before that also. Uh, has a focus of successful online entrepreneurs. And there's a wide variety of niches. I don't need to read them to you. Um, the only actual member I will uh, name is Sean Collins, who runs Affiliate Summit. Um, I won't say that my group is responsible for any of the success of Affiliate Summit, but we have given him ideas on how to do it better. And I think he, he uh, would agree with that. So day to day, we use an email list to communicate. And we currently have 44 members, and we get about 35 posts a day. And that seems like a lot. Uh, it's truly a continual interaction. And pretty much it's the first thing I do every day when I get to my computer is I start looking at list mail. I want to know what's been happening overnight. I want to know if there's problems. I want to know if there's great ideas. And that's the first thing I do pretty much every day is, is check my list mail. And it's not just because I'm the leader. I'm really getting a lot of it myself. And we also have semi-annual in-person conferences. Um, my wife is also a member. She happens to be our, um, our conference coordinator. And she flies around looking for cool hotels, usually kind of resorty type places, where we get together in not a room quite this big, because there's only 44 of us. but um, we sit down and we talk about what's the latest in our own fields and what we see coming up. And let me tell you, it's really high value, fabulous information we get from there. I have tried a, um, a web-based forum, and it did not work. Uh, I didn't try it for my main group. I tried it for, for a separate group I'm doing. And you know, we got some interaction going, going around. But I wasn't seeing the passion, the meat, the kind of the really good stuff out of that group. Um, so I moved them to email, and it instantly took off. And they're getting really meaty, and it's, the group's only uh, about five months old now. And it's, it's just amazing to me to, to see the difference in a web versus email environment. We do have a, a, a private section of our website on my, on my main group so that we can post reference material like biography, so if we get a new member in, he gets to go and look at who's here and what do they do. And that's really valuable, but the communications is done by email. So everybody participates, and if they don't, they're out, and everybody benefits from it. Because if they don't, they leave. They're paying a lot of money to be there. My 
the dues in this group are nominally $1,000 a year. I did actually this year say, you know, pay what you want. I'm, I'm expecting, you know, 1000 ish but pay what you want. And several members paid more, up to $5,000, because it was that valuable to them. And they want to reward me because they, what they really want is for me to continue because I'm pretty good at this. I've been doing it for a long time. The members get to be there. They don't have to, f to, to worry about the rules. They don't have to worry about taking care of things, taking care of problems. They have to worry about the rules as they apply to themselves, but they don't have to worry about if, if somebody else does it. Um, I do. But I'm willing to do it because this adds up to me not to a half million dollars a year, but it's significant. It's more than the uh, median income of U.S. households just to run this group, which is kind of a part-time sideline for me. And so what do I get from this, or what do all the members get from it? Uh, I can't really tell you all the secrets from my group because they're secret. But for instance, um, we knew very, very early on that Twitter and Facebook were the social media sites to pay attention to, MySpace and Google Buzz, and not so much. And we heard that way, 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 way before that was kind of common knowledge, common wisdom. So my members you know, tend to have very big Facebook followings. They have, tend to have very big uh, Twitter followings because they concentrated their efforts there and didn't worry about MySpace. Because at the time, you know, for a while there, they were kind of neck and neck. And uh, a lot of people weren't sure, should I spend a lot of time here or there? And you know, the, the social media experts in my group was, were saying, well, here's the demographics of MySpace, and here's the demographics of Facebook. And if you're a garage band, you probably want to be on MySpace, but if you want to do business, you want to be on Facebook. And it really made the decisions really easy for a lot of us. And I want to say right up very clearly, this is not a pitch for you to join my group. My group is full. And um, don't even have a waiting list. So this is not about getting people into my group at all. What is it about? I'll get to that because I have <laughs> something else first. Um, what do I get out of it personally? And I want to give you an example that came out of one of my own group's in-person conferences last April. So I was thinking about, I'd like to start teaching this kind of stuff. I'm quite good at this according to my own group members. And I was looking for another challenge, something else to do. Um, I kind of thrive on, on new stuff. Um, and I realized that if I shared this with other people, it doesn't impact my own success. That if I teach you how to do this and you become more successful, it doesn't take from me, it doesn't take from anybody else. It literally makes the world a better place. And, you know, I, and I have this infrastructure behind me that will help me launch a new business. So what sort of infrastructure? So these are the kind of people that were helping me with my business. Social media people, content development people, video people, um, career switch people. And, you know, it goes on and on. And all these people were willing to help me for free. And in fact, not really for free, they're paying to help me. Why would they do that? Because they're getting the same kind of help too. They're helping each other. And just because I'm the leader doesn't mean I don't need help too. So they're there to help me when I have questions on how do I use social media to do this? How do I use Facebook specifically to do this? How do I use AWeber to set up a mailing list and a sequenced autoresponder that will teach this stuff? And I've got all those people in there that are otherwise known as my mastermind group. So when I have these questions, I just pop a message onto the list. And somebody will say, well, this is how you set up a Weber. This is what you need to do. And somebody else might say, well, you know, what I've found with AWeber is if you set it up this way, 
et cetera, et cetera. And it com becomes a discussion. And it's not only helping me, because other people who are perhaps interested in doing stuff with AWeber, they might have the same kind of questions. And now they're learning about the same thing because I asked about it. And it's really powerful. You can really get amazing information this way from top-notch experts. So I think that a mastermind is the ultimate secret to success. So Andrew Carnegie was worth $300 billion if you convert that to 2007 money. That's six times what Bill Gates is worth now. And what he discovered, and what the reason he asked Napoleon Hill to write Think and Grow Rich is because he realized this is the secret to success. Napoleon Hill made it, you know, think and grow rich, make money. That sure worked for, for Carnegie. But Carnegie basically wanted to share this because he realized if I share this with the world or if I get Napoleon Hill to do it for me because I'm too busy, it's not going to impact my own wealth. Not like it would hurt him with $300 billion. He wanted the world to be a better place. So that's pretty amazing. So Carnegie made it clear that mastermind groups is what made him rich. And he basically wanted um, Hill to get that message out. And the way that Hill did that was he interviewed hundreds of millionaires. And back in the 30s, a million bucks was a lot of money. And he found that basically all these people agreed that joining together and helping each other was what made them successful. And it's something that people really didn't learn from Think and Grow Rich. Because how many of you are in a mastermind group at this time, besides the people who are in my own? So it's like three. That's pretty small. So, he, so Carnegie made sure that he wanted this secret shared, and that's what Think and Grow Rich was about, was sharing this secret. So I'm going to read this one because I think it's the key to this, this talk. I believe the fastest and biggest successes come from many smart people working together, and I believe this has always been true. I think that's the number one takeaway. If you do nothing else, start working with other people, your, your peers. And not necessarily, I don't mean in joint ventures, but hey, I'll help you with this. Can you help me with that? And I think the mastermind concept is the easiest way to get the expertise you need to help you succeed. So the reason I'm telling you this is I want to make, basically make the world a better place. It didn't, help, didn't hurt Carnegie to give up the secret. It's certainly not going to hurt me. So basically, this is the way to become successful. And I don't think many people realize this. I don't think very many people got this out of Think and Grow Rich. So, and also, a group can be a profit center in itself. I make pretty darn good money just from running a group part time. So to me, because I can increase your success without hurting myself, without hurting anybody else, I think it's a moral imperative to do it. So that's what my, my new website is about. And the point for, is not for you to join my group. My group's full. I can't handle you know, 30 groups. I want you to start your own groups. And that's what Napoleon Hill and Carnegie was, was all about, is for you to start your own groups. And I will help you with that. I do have a free email home study course. You can get it at mastermindsource.com. It is an AWeber sequence um, that will uh, give you the basics of it. It's pretty wide. It answers a lot of questions. Um, and there is a contact form on there that when you get to the end, if you don't know something or don't understand something, that um, um, definitely can help you with that. And um, I'll uh, be very happy to uh, give you one of my get out of hell free cards, which has this uh, URL on it, so that you can take it home. You don't have to write it down if you don't have anything with you. But um, questions? And let's see what we've got so far as it loads these up.
So what's the best email service to uh, maintain a, a discussion list? And I think that you shouldn't use commercial um, software like Yahoo Groups or Google Groups. I think you gotta maintain your own so that you not only can configure it exactly the way you want, but that it's completely secure. That you know that as long as your uh, server is running, you can, you can um, get messages through. How much of my time do I spend managing my group? Um, I'm guessing probably three to four hours a week because my group runs pretty smoothly. Uh, occasionally there's, there's trouble. Um, we had one of the group members get in trouble with the law recently. And um, so the question is, should I let that person stay in this group? And um, so I spent a lot of time talking with the, the member who found this out, talking with the member who was involved, and going back and forth and saying, how comfortable are you with this? Uh, how, are you, how is the person that got in trouble? How are you dealing with this? And basically, I wasn't too satisfied with the answers, and so I kicked the person out of the group. Um, actually, just before I was doing that, the person resigned, which kind of uh, mooted the decision. But you know, it took me t 10 or 12 hours of, of work time to, uh, to go through all this. And yeah, so sometimes it takes some time, but in general, a very small amount of my week, less than 10%. And since I work more than 40 hours, um, it's really less than 10 percent. I see a hand up over here. Yeah, you said that for the best email service or the best email service was your own, but what, what is that? Okay, so the question is if you're maintaining your own email list, um, what, what specifically to use? And I use Mailman. It's, it's included with a lot of the control panels like cPanel and Plesk uh, and, and very many. I mean, Bluehost, if you get a Bluehost account for your uh, your group website, it's included in the, what is it, 10 bucks a month? I mean, it's really, really cheap to have it. I do have a, um, a report that I wrote on how to set Mailman up th that uh, is available through my site, and um, that's, that's what I use, and I think it's very adequate. Sure. There's more. How do you find group members? That's a really good question. Um, the way I found my first group members and what I suggest is in online forums. So if you participate in online forums already in your niche, there's probably some people there that you get to know that, that um, you might think, hey, that's a good person for a group. And um, I, don't, I absolutely don't suggest you go around spamming, you know, if you're in a, if your big thing is affiliate marketing, I don't think you ought to go to the affiliate forums and say, hey, I'm starting a group, who wants to join? I mean, that's basically kind of spammy. But if you're active in these groups, surely you are starting to meet people and get to know people and say, that person right there would be a good for a group, and that person over there would be good for this group. And pop them an email and say, this is what I'm doing, are you interested? And I did that myself back in 1999 with my current group. Um, I knew quite a few people. I was an email publisher and I knew other email publishers like Chris Perillo. And I said, this is what I'm doing. And I'd sent to about 12 people and I think I got about 10 members out of that. And, um, and then the second phase after you get going is you say, who else do you know? Those 10 people in my group, I said, who else do you know that you think would be a good fit for this group? And if, if they each know 12-ish people, and we get five, you know, your, your group is suddenly pretty large. And that's how I did it. Let's see, what else do we have here? Proper entry price, it, it really depends on the niche. Um, if you're, you know, doing pet rescue, it's probably gonna be a pretty low f amount. If you're doing internet marketing of $2,500 products, it's probably gonna be a lot higher. So. But again, I think that the way to do dues is to, um, is to prove the value first, get the group going first, show what, what it is you're doing, and go from there. And once you prove the value, say, okay, I need to be compensated for the time of running this group. I'm providing a value to you. I think it's worth 
five hundred a year, a thousand a year, whatever. Wait, there's more. Um, do I invite or is there a specific application process? And these aren't showing up on my screen, so thanks for pointing those out. Um, I think in, in the early stages you invite because people don't know about the group. Um, the way it works now with my group, um, I let the members sponsor. In fact, I require the sponsorship of new members. Somebody in my group has to vouch for this person and say, I think this person ought to be in this group for these reasons, I think they'll add this kind of value. I think they'll get good stuff out of it. I've talked to them, they, they're interested. And then they actually say the name so that people in the group already can say, uh, no, I've dealt with that guy before and I had a problem with him. I don't, want to, I don't want him in the group. It's very rare, but I want that opportunity to be there so they can veto. But um, so then once everybody says, okay, we're, we're good for this guy to apply, then they go through an application process. And I have a fairly stringent application process, not so much to weed people out for their skills, because basically I have somebody vouching for them already, but I want them to see what their expectations are, and I want to set the expectations of what it means to be in this group. First of all, 35 messages a day. You gotta be fairly email-centric to handle that. And second of all, um, that participation is required. You can't just sit there and absorb. You've got to weigh in if it's something of, that you have expertise in, and you have to come to a certain amount of meetings. And if that works for you, fill out the form. Yes, sir. Under the framework of the group, do you find that you focus on a particular topic or the free form where everyone is basically talking about something that they feel is what add value to the group and everyone goes at it? So are we talking about specific topics or pretty much free form? And it's pretty much free form because I don't want, for my group, I didn't want, everybody has to be in email publishing because I wanted to learn more about other things. I wanted to learn about social media, about blogging, which I wasn't doing at the time, about different kinds of, of monetization techniques, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my group is a little bit wider than you know, real estate agents. It's anybody that's working online because I wanted that breadth of knowledge so that if I wanted to learn something, I could. So um, one of the popular threads that we have in my group are what I learned this week. And it might be some new feature in AWeber or something that isn't new but nobody seems to be using. Look what I found they can do. And it's like, oh, cool, I know how I, how I can apply that to my site. And you know, not everything, not everybody's gonna be interested in every topic, and that's okay. Just as long as in general, people are getting good value out of the group. So if I see something about, you know, a thread about how to do something really cool on your Macintosh, well, I'm a Windows guy, so I don't care. So I don't read those. And there's no requirement that you have to read everything in the group. If it applies to you and it's of interest to you, cool, you'll learn something, and if not, Cool. Are they essentially aimed at startups? Well, my group is 11, almost 12 years old now, and it is still going really strong. Um, so I would say no, I think it's, it's really aimed at incremental increase in success. So I've literally had people in my group say, you know what, I don't think I'm making it. I think I'm gonna have to go back to a day job. And this happened at our first in-person conference, and somebody said, well, what's the problem? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm an AdSense guy, and I'm not making enough money to, to support my family. So somebody who was really whizzy on AdSense said, okay, the conference keep going, I'm gonna take him into the back. And I was up there in the front running this conference, and I could see them hunched over a laptop in the back of the room. And literally two hours later, the guy who said he thought he had to go to a day job seeing an increase in his AdSense revenues. I mean, literally in two hours. And the next day he said, I had the best day yesterday ever in my AdSense account. And he went on to become a millionaire, literally. How often do I meet face to face? Um, twice a year. I don't require that people come every one. They have to come to one and three. We generally get out of 
44 people, we generally get 25 or 30. And it kind of depends on where it is and, and what we're going to talk about. We don't really post an agenda very far in advance because it kind of depends on who's coming. So if, um, you know, somebody who's an expert in AWeber or social media is coming, they'll say, I can talk about the latest thing in Facebook, or I can talk about the new changes that were announced on 60 Minutes last night, or I can talk about that. And so we build an agenda based on the same people who are on that list, and it's, <laughs> it's quite amazing. What differences have you found in the online versus face-to-face? -face? It's just a lot faster and a lot more interesting to get face-to-face. -face. Um, very generally, people will come away from the meeting saying, I've learned so much from this. I've paid for this conference 100 times over, and it hasn't started yet because we're just sitting around dinner talking. Uh, when emails go out, is everybody copying each other? No, that's what the, the mailing list software does. So you send it to a specific address on the server. It automatically man, man, um, manages who's on the list and sends out copies by themselves. And so if you hit reply, it goes to the list again and it fans out again. Sorry about that sound guy. Uh, best way to find a group, and that's something I'm working out. Um, I'm finding that most of these groups are kind of secretive, and, and people didn't know about my group except by pretty limited word of mouth uh, until I launched Mastermind Source and, and started talking about it. So, you know, we weren't getting people just falling in out of the blue um, saying, hey, I want to join your group. So um, it's pretty difficult. So. Well, I think probably over time for mastermindsource.com, uh, once I'm better known as the mastermind source, that I'm going to start doing a directory of groups that, um, that take members. And it's probably not going to be very many, which is why I say I think the best way to do it is to form your own group. But if you really don't want to, then it's going to be tough. I mean, start asking around to, to your colleagues and your friends and your peers. Are you in a mastermind group? Tell me about it. Do they take applications? I'm interested. I want to get into a group. And let me make sure I'm not. Uh... Is my group always focused on the same project? No, absolutely not. It, it, it evolves over time. Um, we sometimes have recurring themes, like, say, social media or AWeber or something like that. But it evolves, too, as, as the platforms evolve and as the business problems evolve. And I'm going to go back to this guy who's had his hands up for a while. Uh, yeah. Do you do conference calls? Uh, we don't do conference calls. Um, we've tried them in the past. And what we've found is that it's pretty rare that everybody's <laughs> available at the same time. Um, and that's true of the conferences, too. This is why we only get you know, 60 70% attendance. Is some people are busy that week or whatever, and they can't make it. But um, we could probably do that with conference calls, too, and only have 60 or 70% show up, but it just hasn't happened in my group. I don't see anything wrong with it, though. Right. Yeah, I ran a mastermind group, a pretty successful one for a couple of years, and it was all based around uh, conference calls. And we, I just, you know, I had started it and ran it, and I created a, made a rule that if you miss two calls, you're out. So you were requiring people to phone in. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, so I, certainly back in the, you know, in the 30s when Napoleon Hill was, was pushing this, they didn't have email. So what were they doing? You know, they were either getting together in person or they were doing phone calls. But, you know, the, the, the very cool thing about email is, first of all, you can get people from all over the world. It, it's, it's the niche that counts, not the, the physical proximity. And the second thing is that, you know, if you have a problem or a question or something, you can post it to the email list. And odds are somebody's up if you are. And uh, you could probably have an answer within an hour or two. And that's really powerful. So let's see what else is coming up. Um, I think I have covered all of these. So any, any other questions before we wrap up? Oh, did one just pop up? It figures.
So if we're not all focused on the same thing, who do we communicate with? Well, you know, Aweber, for instance, is you know probably the premier email service provider for email marketing. Um, I use it. In fact, probably about 60% of my group uses Aweber because it is the leader, so we all use it. And um, we don't all do the same things with it. I have a newsletter on it. I have some blog alerts on it. And I have this um, educational sequence on it. And those are three very, very different things. And I'm just one guy. So if I use it for multiple things, and you use it for multiple things, and he uses it for multiple things, we still have the same questions about it. We still want to know, how do you do this with it? And how do you get more people to sign up? And how do you get this? And how do you get that? And how do you integrate it? And how do you do that? And how do you archive it? And how do you convert it into RSS feeds? And on and on it goes. And it doesn't matter that I'm doing an educational sequence and he's doing a marketing sequence. It doesn't matter. But we can both get tremendous value out of somebody saying, this is how you do it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, one other question that somebody handed me before I came in, um, if this is so cool, why doesn't everybody do it already? Well, first of all, most people are lazy. <laughs> you know, they don't want to do it. They don't want to do the work. Um, they're not the leader type. They think they're too busy. They don't want to do the work involved. They would rather pay somebody else. And you know, that's cool. And somebody in here asked the same question. I, I don't really want to do the work. I just want to pay to be in it. Um, the hard part is finding the group. Because most of these groups are full or cliquish, and they don't really want outsiders. I really actually welcome outsiders. Um, Last year, I was asking for fresh blood. I want young people in here. I'm, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm getting older. You know, imagine that. Um, and so when I said this, you know, several members said, I know a guy. He's only 26. Man, he's doing cool stuff. He's doing this and that. I think he'd be a good member. Any objections? Hearing none, he applied. He got in. He's been a very cool member. Um, very successful and, and bringing in some new ideas. Um, so I really welcomed kind of a mixing things up. Um, I had one member leave at the end of the year, um, and that just opened up a seat for somebody else, and that's cool. So I've had about 200 people over the course of the last 12 years go through my group. Some of the uh, founding members are still there, but obviously most of them are new, and it's been really valuable to me to get fresh perspectives and different niches in there that I can learn about. Any other questions? Yeah. In my group? Yeah, absolutely. Why is it necessary that people pay? Well, f first of all, um, we're all there to help each other succeed in their business. Here's some new business techniques that you can use. And if I'm spending you know, up to 10% of my time making everybody happy, making the group run so everybody can use these techniques, that means 10% of my time is not being used for that. So I have a, a significant opportunity cost. I have a significant amount of time invested. I want to be compensated for that time and opportunity cost. I'm sorry? No. Because I want you to start a group, and I want you to charge other people. I'm not getting any of that. So there's no multi-level marketing in there at all. I'm not interested in having anything to do with running your group. I just want to teach you how to do it so you can do it. Um, and the other reason that I want people to charge dues is because it makes the members pay attention. If you're paying $5,000 a year to be in that group, are you going to blow off those emails? I don't think so. Because I think it'd be kind of dumb to spend that kind of money and do nothing with it. And, and we all know that people buy all these information marketing products and spend 2500 bucks, and then they never crack the cover on it because they're overwhelmed by it. This is a really small, incremental thing that you can dip your toe into and say, hey, I can use that. I can do that. Eh, that doesn't apply to me, but I can do that. And they start engaging, and they start being more successful. So I think that if you force them to pay, and you know, I don't 
really mean a gunpoint or anything, but you know, if you have a dues structure, they will pay more attention, they'll start engaging, and they'll realize that it's t this is time well spent because they're getting a lot out of it. Yes, sir. And presumably, then part of the focus, he's saying what, what happens if you buy in and if you leave, you get, the, you get the money back. Well, that's basically, you're not spending anything, you're not really invested in it. Because you're gonna get the money back no matter what you do. Um, and then probably what people wanna do with that money is, let's invest it or let's use it as uh, venture capital to create value so that we'll all get rich off of it. Well, then the, the group becomes, you know, about the the money and and the the focused common project instead of your own business. So, ma'am. So the dues are more like an administrative kind of cost for you. So yeah. So Right, it's not for my expertise, unless you t say it's for the expertise of running the group. Okay. It is, yeah, basically for admin. Um, and, you know, I make a pretty good hourly wage when I consider how much I uh, get paid and how much time I put into it. But the real question is, am I providing value for that money that you're paying me? And the members clearly think yes, because they're paying up to $5,000 to be there. Are we running out of time? Oh, we've got 12 minutes left if you have any other questions. Yeah. So you have a membership site essentially? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you have a membership site, and by helping them, you get a percentage of their increase. It sounds more like consulting to me as, as opposed to a peer group. Um, I think in my group, I'm definitely not the star of my group. I'm, I'm kind of a focus because I'm the leader, but I'm not, I don't make the most money. I'm not the most famous. Um, I'm not the one that everybody stops and goes, really? What do, you, what do you think now? There are members like that in my group but I'm not that person and I don't need to be. Um, so I'm not really selling myself as expertise, like the earlier question, I'm just facilitating a place for people to learn. So uh, is, is that a business model? Sure it is, but I don't think it's a mastermind group. Any other questions? Well, thanks very much. If you would like to get a little free card, um, see me or my two friends who happen to be sitting up front. We've got some for you. And thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.